Now we're going to have a look at biology and our first topic is looking at cells. Now cells are the main building blocks of all living things, animals, plants, bacteria, etc. There are two main types of cells amongst living material, amongst living things. There are eukaryotes and prokaryotes. So these are different types of cells. Prokaryotes primarily are in bacteria and are things we call cyanobacteria. They used to be called blue-green algae. And eukaryotes we, we have in animal cells, plant cells, protoctista, and fungi. And we have to look at a few differences and similarities. However, there are more that you can look into. So for example, first of all, you would find a cell wall. You would find that in your prokaryotes and you would find that in plant cells of the eukaryotes, but not animal cells. So the cell wall in plants would be like a cellulose cell wall. The makeup in different prokaryotes is slightly different. The DNA within the cells within prokaryotes is the naked circular DNA. So you just find circular DNA in prokaryotes and they're not surrounded by anything. In, pro in eukaryotes, they're bound to things called histones and they're surrounded by nuclear envelopes. That's both in plants and animals. The ribosomes that you have in prokaryotes, are the size of them are 70x is what we say. And the size of those ribosomes in eukaryotes is 80x. There's a very different size between the two. And they also have different functions. In prokaryotes, you will find there are a lot of cell organelles that are missing. Organelles are the name we give to the little structures that we find within cells, hence organelles. So the ones that you would have missing in prokaryotes would be there would be no rough endoplasmic retic reticulum or smooth endo endoplasmic reticulum. There is no Golgi apparatus, no chloroplast, and no mitochondria. So you would think how, does, how do things like respiration happen? So in prokaryotes, the respiration happens in the folds around that. So these are folds of the membrane and they are called the mesosome. The cell membrane, which is universal to all, to both groups, has a few different functions. First of all, it is selectively permeable, which means that it chooses what is able to go in and what is able to go out. It also has clearly a structural point. It keeps everything within the cell, within one unit. There are also communication aspects of it. Between cells, it will have receptors on the outside or even contacting by being in contact with the cell next to it, it can send communication between them. The fourth one is it can also recognize other, other substances. By having receptors on the outside, it can recognize the surroundings it's in. This, is more, this can be arguably more important for single cell organisms like amoeba, where they have to detect food sources and be able to move towards them. And this is why the next, the next use of them is mobility. So mobility is their ability to move. Again, this could be more prominent in single cell bacteria or single cell organisms that are on their own. However, there can still be some movement and growth in cells within eukaryotes and higher organisms. And the last one is that they are a site for chemical reactions. So chemical reactions happen on the surface and within them within the cytoplasm. Now remember, when you have your cells, they can, um, they can be the subjects of a lot of different things and they have to be allowed transport across that membrane. One important one would be its presence of water or presence of salts. Within a cell, you have a certain concentration of water and salt. If you were to put a red blood cell in water, in pure water, then what would happen is the water from the surrounding area would move through the cell wall into the cell and the cell would burst. This is because we say that the water potential of the water is higher than the water potential of the cell, and the cell has a higher salt potential. Quite complicated. But because the water has a higher potential of water, because it's all just water, it will move to an area of low potential of water. Because the cell has some salt in it, it's not as much water in its certain area, so the water moves in towards it. Conversely, another way of describing this is that we say the salt potential of the cell is higher than the water and the salt potential outside of the cell. And by having a selectively permeable membrane, so your cell membrane, you can say what things can move in and out. And they can be very important in how cells keep their structure and keep their shape. This can also help the movement of the cell if it can direct how much water is going in and how much water is going out. One other aspect to consider is a thing called pressure potential. This is mostly important in higher eukaryotes when we have uh, a blood system where you'll have a certain pressure of blood going through your body, going through your cells, and you'll have to have some liquid, some water going into cells and some coming out. But the pressure will play a big part on how much water is forced in and how much water is forced out, as well as the salt potential. So you have to keep those things in mind. 
The last thing to consider is the movement of particles along the cell membrane. This is arguably one of the most important functions. The cell membrane has to be able to control which particles can go in and go out, and how. Some particles can move by something called facilitated diffusion. So these are particles that are moving down their concentration gradient, but they are being allowed by certain channel proteins that you have in the cell. And you can also use a thing called active transport. Active transport is different in that it uses energy. So you can actually transport something against its concentration gradient and take it into the cell if it needs it, or out again if it needs to. And the last one we have is endocytosis or exocytosis. This is where you have certain uh, membranes within the cell that would fuse to the outside of the cell, either to release or to absorb particles or things that it needs or needs to get rid of. That was a quick look at cells, and now we're going to move on to disease and the immune system. If you need to rewind back, have a look. If not, we'll carry on.